Oh, with my brakes on, something I've unfortunately done, by the way. The moral of the story for me was that you don't have to choose between looking and feeling your best and eating delicious, flavorful, satisfying food. In fact, I honestly think you've got to have both factors at play to make consciously healthy food choices on the regular. It's the same reason you'll never find me fasting on Yom Kippur, Jewish New Year, doing a liquid cleanse, or engaging in anything ultra-restrictive when it comes to food. Because, honestly, I've been there and done that. And not only did it feel like crap, but it also didn't bring the results I craved. So rest assured, the reason I can speak so definitively about food-related missteps is that I've known them intimately both personally and professionally. Some details on the professional part. I'm a registered dietitian in private practice in Los Angeles, and I'm more or less a food therapist. Truth be told, the gig wasn't exactly what I was expecting, coming out of my clinical nutrition graduate program, but I fully embraced the role. In grad school at NYU, I pored over biochem and organic chemistry with serious gusto. Not joking. I freaking love science. But after finishing my dietetic residency at Mount Sinai Hospital in New York City, I realized just how much the science stuff takes a backseat to the emotional aspects in everyday life. In my practice, I work with different types of women and girls, and some dope dudes, too. From editors, law firm partners, MBA students, middle schoolers, high schoolers, and Hollywood folk, to working moms and full-time moms. A varied and unique bunch, to say the least. Early on, I noticed a recurring theme that's still ongoing today. Most of my clients can immediately rattle off all the things they ought to be doing. Limiting added sugar, exercising portion control, making better choices at restaurants, etc. The problem is that they're not actually doing those things on a regular basis. In other words, there's a gap between their intentions to get healthier or lose weight and their day-to-day -day eating behaviors. So before my clients and I get to the actual meal planning, the crux of our initial work plays out more like a food therapy session, getting to the bottom of why they aren't doing those things. But how is it that so many of us are motivated to look and feel better and understand the basics needed to get there, and yet we're not following through? Hint, it's not because we're the worst, although, ironically, that's often where our heads go. It's largely because the vast majority of us have a conflict-ridden relationship with food. When you add up the emotional baggage that comes with that troubled relationship territory, the constant distractions we all deal with on the daily, and the physiological issues involved, it's not actually all that shocking that we're not delivering on our get healthy goals. The reality is, it's really difficult to translate our good intentions into effective actions in the face of all this noise, because we're constantly working against ourselves. Here's the awesome news. It's scientifically proven that at any age, we can change the way our brains function to boost willpower and develop consistent healthy habits and behaviors, even if those habits and behaviors don't necessarily come naturally to us. But we can only get there if we're willing to flex different mental muscles and practice these moves on a regular basis. The first step in developing healthy behaviors is to identify your personal roadblocks and then to phase out your emotional hangups around food and your body. After that, you can start applying strategies to help you deal with these root causes in order to make truly thoughtful eating choices that serve your ultimate goals, whatever they may be. And that is exactly what you're going to learn to do in this audiobook. Part one is like a one-on-one -on -one food therapy session where I'll help you broaden your understanding of your personal history with food, what makes you tick and eat, when you tend to lose control, and what your values are in terms of indulgence and pleasure. You'll begin by pinpointing the factors that cause you to stray from your healthy eating intentions so you can use that info as a roadmap to anticipate and sidestep those obstacles in the future. Then you'll learn how to develop workable food-related coping strategies that will better serve you including how to tune into your body signals. No ashram required.